Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. In this Israel Keys video, I'll be discussing the Deborah Feldman case. I hope you enjoy. Israel had spent the first week of April in Washington state. He had rented a 2009 Dodge Charger and had driven 639 miles, camping at Hoback Beach Resort, south of Nia Bay. Israel booked a hotel at Squim Quality Inn and Suites on the 7th before flying to Manchester, New Hampshire that same day. In New Hampshire, he rented a 2007 Hyundai Sonata and over the course of the remaining seven days, he drove a total of 1,047 miles. On April 8th, Israel checked into Handy Suites for a two-night stay. This was the same hotel that he'd stay in two years later on the courier trip. Israel formulated what he called a tight timeline, making it appear like he wasn't capable of having committed a crime in another state. By having a hotel room for two days, it looked as if Israel was remaining in the Essex area. In reality, he was now likely uncovering one of his caches somewhere in Vermont or upstate New York before heading south. Israel also had a hotel reservation for the Highlander Inn in Manchester, New Hampshire on April 9th. It seems like he was trying to appear in two different states at one time, and this confusing behaviour would have aided in his criminal activities. Whilst Israel was beginning his preparation for murder, 20-year-old Matthew Feldman was feeling annoyed. He knew all about his mother's struggles. He was aware of her substance addiction and drifter lifestyle. The last time they'd seen his mother was on April 8th of 2009, in Little Ferry, a borough of Bergen County, New Jersey. Media stories claim that Deborah was last seen at her Hackensack apartment, and Little Ferry Borough borders South Hackensack. 48-year-old Deborah Feldman was desperate for money and demanded that he give her his $400 paycheck from Wendy's. Deborah had threatened suicide if she didn't get the cash, but Matthew knew that she wouldn't go ahead with this. Matthew eventually gave in to Deborah's pleas and handed her the money, and Deborah left and was never heard from again. It has been reported that Deborah was operating as a sex worker to fund her substance addiction. How she was finding clients is unclear. It could have been through online sites, but it was likely that she was a streetwalker. Or perhaps it was a combination of both. How Israel and Deborah came into contact is an unknown. It was believed that Deborah was abducted sometime on April 9th, likely at night or during the early morning hours. Was Deborah spotted outside of her apartment building by Israel? He'd staked out one in Essex, Vermont, prior to the courier murders after all. Or had Israel made contact with Deborah on Craigslist or Backpage? Why Israel travelled that far south to find a victim was never explained. He admitted to having taken somebody across multiple state lines into New York before burying that person by a river outside of the town of Tupper Lake. The only relevant person who went missing at the time was Deborah and the investigators were confident that Deborah was Israel Key's victim for that trip. Deborah Feldman, we had talked about her before. Yeah. New Jersey um, is looking into her more, FBI is looking into her more in that situation. Alright. I thought maybe that'd be a place where we could start. No, I mean, not as far as I'm concerned. Well, what should we tell New Jersey? What should they tell New Jersey? You said to come to you. They're looking at things. What should we tell New Jersey? Your computer. 
here. Which computer? Mine? Yeah, on your computer. My laptop? Tower. 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 Oh, okay. Let's You don't understand why the name was on my computer? Well, put it this way, if you... There's a lot of names on my computer. Right, but we're talking about this one. I don't know. Here, when you search your name... told you we'd do this, and we'd come back and try to get the information from you without going over to try to get the information. And so we're just trying to hold up our end of the bargain. Right. I mean, if you're referring to that, I mean, 2009, isn't that what you said? The it's, yeah, it's really. If you're referring to the New York trip, I don't, I don't know what you mean by going over because there wasn't anybody with me on that. There wasn't. Okay, well, no, okay, let's just cut. I mean, I'm not, I just want to come over here with a clear picture, you know. Are you responsible for her death? No. Okay. Do you know anything about her disappearance? No. Why is her name on your computer? I don't know. Probably because I looked it up. I can't imagine why Kimberly would. Does that image have any meaning to you? Um, sure, but probably not on. Well, just explain so we're not sitting here wondering. No, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not going to talk about what's on the computer. I mean, if you, like I say, if you're going to go out. I don't. I, I don't know what you're expecting me to say. I already said we're. I'm not talking about any more specific cases until we get some kind of deal hammered out for something. Well, I mean, there's something more to the story. Just so I'm clear, there's something more to the story of Deborah that you're just not don't want to tell us now. No, I just yeah, I just don't want to talk about. It. But I'm right about that. Yeah. Deborah's remains are likely buried along the Raquette River. Israel was unsure about the condition of the remains and this is probably because they were near to or now submerged by water. And this sounds like the same scenario with one of his Washington caches. River flooding had caused some issues. There is a cemetery just north of the Raquette River and this could have been a spot which Israel utilised in order to park his car and get Deborah's body close to the river. Following the burial of Deborah, Israel robbed a bank in Tupper Lake at around midday. He fled the bank and parked at a local campground, counting money and letting the heat die down. At some point, Israel travelled back to Essex, Vermont and used the same shovel to bury his kill kit along a river. It was the same one used during the Courier murder years later. April 10th, the same day as the bank robbery, had Israel making a hotel reservation at the Hampton Inn in Colchester, Vermont. Days later, on April 13th, Israel made postal money orders, and this was to avoid transaction records I'm assuming, and the money used was likely from the Tupper Lake bank robbery. The next day, Israel flew out of New Hampshire, confident that he'd gotten away with yet another murder, bank robbery, and likely numerous other crimes on the same trip. Another person had simply gone missing. Deborah had vanished without a trace. Matthew had searched for his mother upon her not reaching out in the weeks following their final encounter. Deborah had been reported missing, but her case went cold because there were no real leads. Plus, Deborah was on the fringes of society, making her case and fate less prioritised. Matthew Feldman received the news that Israel had likely murdered his mother way back in 2009, 
and this news came from an FBI news report on Israel on November the 14th of 2013. He was angered by the news and had many questions, which were all left up to speculation by this point. And just a side note here, it's not clear if the FBI had reached out personally to Matthew prior to him hearing about the FBI news. Israel had mentioned Deborah and whether they believed that keeping this hidden from her son was the best course of action at the time is uncertain. Despite their troubled relationship, Matthew was quoted as saying, at the end of the day, she's still my mother. There are so many unanswered questions on this trip. Why did Israel pick Hackensack, New Jersey as an abduction spot? Was it because of the transport links? Or was it because he wanted to keep distance between an abduction and body disposal site? Upstate New York and Vermont were areas in which he frequently drove through and so it makes sense why he'd bury a body there. He sounded much more comfortable and familiar in that region, free to visit victim grave sites over the years and be close to them, having this accessibility and control over them even in death. This was important to Israel after all. Israel was linked to Deborah Feldman in part because he had googled her name, but he had spelt it wrong. Her case never drew much media attention and his Tupper Lake bank robbery actually made more of a headline. Despite all of the unknowns on this trip, it really did highlight how Israel operated. All of his excessive driving didn't sound necessary, but he still went to the extreme on this trip. He didn't need to go through all of the different eastern states, but he still did. Years later, he went against this excessive travelling by abducting Bill and Lorraine Currier just blocks behind his hotel. The distance between abduction and body disposal site beginning to minimise. This has been the sad case of Deborah Feldman. As always, thank you for watching.